Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, nice to meet you. I'm going to tell you about the plague of uh, advanced bad bots. And more specifically, we'll try together to deconstruct the malicious bot problem. But before we start, let's go back a bit in the past and let's talk about uh, what happened with the Vinted platform. Apparently, it was targeted by large cyber attacks and hundreds of accounts were stolen. From what we could read in the news, uh, they were stolen not because there was a vulnerability in the site, but because those hacked users used the same credentials in uh, different uh, platforms. And the attacker used the data from previous breached in order to, uh, to find those, uh, uh, those accounts and hack them. So it means that this uh, platform was uh, targeted by a credential stuffing attack. And this is one of the threats that Adam's about represent and one of the attacks that we're going to talk about today. So my name is Yuan Silam. I am security researcher at uh, Imperva. I've been researching for four years in the field of cybersecurity. I spent the first part of my time analyzing malwares, but more recently I spent time on web application security, try to understand how bots behave, if there are ways to detect them, and even block them. Uh, so this is the agenda of the session uh, today. So uh, first we're going to talk about, uh, relatively quickly, uh, about the, the ecosystem of advanced bots. Then after we'll talk about the structure of uh, advanced bots. And finally, we'll see a few evasions techniques that I spotted during my investigation. Um, first of all, uh, just a quick definition, what exactly is a bot? So it's a software that automates actions on the internet. So there are good bots, of course, uh, like for example, Google bot that's scrolling the internet in order to improve its search engine results. And you have bad bots, for example, vulnerability scanners that are constantly scanning the internet in search of vulnerable web servers in order to exploit them. The difference between the two is the consent of the web server be, to be reached by this kind of bot. For example, a good bot will always respect the robots.txt file at the root of the web server that specifies which uh, address uh, a website agrees to be reached at by bots. Uh, now let's talk quickly about telemetry. So it was estimated that in 2021, 43% of the whole internet traffic was due to bots. And if we uh, focus a bit, 27% uh, of this of the whole internet traffic due to uh, bad bots, with an increase of 2% compared to the previous year. So what exactly is this bad bot traffic? So in order to answer this question, we're going to go over like a few examples of uh, bad bots and explain how they work. So the uh, first one that we can uh, talk about is like open ballot. So it can be used, for example, for credential stuffing. So this is its uh, main interface. So it takes as input uh, first, a combo list of uh, username and passwords, for example, and uh, a configuration file that specifies the flow of requests to be performed against uh, the specific site in order to do uh, a logging uh, attempt. Uh, so this can be, for example, a lolly file or written in uh, C sharp. Um, then we have, for example, account creation bots. For example, this one uh, from AUICD. So it has the ability to generate accounts for roughly 40 different bots, uh, 40, 40 different uh, websites, e-commerce websites, like for example, Amazon or uh, Microsoft Xbox. And usually the accounts generated by this uh, bot can be used for another type of attack uh, called the scalping. So in order to explain uh, the idea behind, I'm going to tell you a, a small story. So let's imagine that you own an e-commerce website and you started the ambitious strategy of releasing premium items in order to reward your loyal customers. And then at the launch day of your release, you realize that all your items, almost sought after items, have been uh, purchased immediately. After investigation, you realize that professional actors made a business of buying uh, your items to resell them later at higher price in resale markets, despite all your uh, anti bots uh, mechanisms uh, in place in your, in your site. So this actually first damages the reputation of your site, because usually those uh, attackers are showing off on uh, Twitter, on uh, uh, social media about the success. Uh, second, it can um, generate frustration for the customer. And lastly, uh, it generates a loss in the long term for the business because uh, users will lose interest in this uh, specific uh, e-commerce website because uh, it's lacking its like, interesting items very quickly. So this bot, NSB uh, bot, is actually one of the most popular in the market uh, for this type of attack. And it has the ability to uh, attack more than 100 different websites all over the world. 
Another type of bot uh, is, uh, that I can mention is like one-click bots. So the idea of this bot is to manage simultaneously multiple uh, user accounts. For example, Google accounts here. So there are six accounts that are managed simultaneously. Two of them are like uh, taking a break. Two of them are reading uh, an email. And two of them are in scheduled mode, which means that soon they are going to perform uh, an action. And the idea is to make them uh, perform like human-like action to get like a higher human score by uh, Google systems and be more likely to receive simple captchas to uh, solve. So as soon as the bot uh, feels comfortable enough, it can test uh, its human score against a site protected by a Google Captcha, for example, uh, this site, and then uh, even possibly uh, send it for uh, for an attack. Um, so now that we get, try to give an answer to the question what, let's try to give an answer to the question who and where. So there are many communities around bots. So there are, for example, developer communities. Uh, places where developers are sharing information about how to write a bot, how to uh, bypass a specific security vendor. So there are a few places like this, for example, uh, Reddit threads, Google groups, are also Discord channels. Like I mentioned three ones, th Scrapy Enthusiast, Scrapy Prod, or Scrapy. It's not only a place for them to uh, share information, but also it provides services. For example, uh, one of them, uh, Scrapy Enthusiasts, give the ability to test which security solution is protecting a specific URL address. Um, so there are also user communities, for example, uh, marketplaces. So there are many more than just uh, those marketplaces, but I'm showing like uh, some of the most popular ones. For example, Tidal and uh, Botmart are communities that share more than 100,000 members each. So there are marketplaces that are more for uh, a specific, specific type of bots, for example, ticket bots, some that are only located on Discord, some uh, um, that are only for rental, some for rental purchase, etc. But also, when you're uh, dealing with bots, uh, investigating underground forums is a very uh, useful uh, thing to do. Uh, for example, this is a Reddit mass direct message bot that's being advertised on the hacking firm. Uh, so they mention a few things, for example, uh, multi threading or anti fingerprint detection. So we're going to see in the last section, for example, how this can look like in practice in the, in the bot source code. Um, especially if you're dealing with uh, credential stuffing. Um, so it's worth uh, going uh, into a specific Telegram channel, a cracking Telegram channel, because usually they share a configuration file for uh, offensive tools like uh, open bullets. So I mentioned here uh, a few of them, like uh, pro cracking or email logs, for example. So that's it for what I wanted to tell about the ecosystem. Now let's talk a bit about the structure of uh, advanced bots. So after the investigation of roughly 40 different bots, it seems that uh, there are like few key components that exist in uh, most of them. So <coughs> the first one is the automation framework. So it's a technology, if you're a developer, you probably know it, that enables to remotely control a fully fledged browser and make it perform some actions. So there are many technologies that enables this, for example, Selenium, WebDriver.io, .NET Browser, Puppetia, etc. Uh, but behind the scene, there are like two main protocols that are being used. So either the WebDriver protocol, so it's a high-level protocol. It uh, has simpler management uh, in, sp uh, in specific cases. It's cross-browser, uh, but it's a bit slower and misses some low-level capabilities. On the other hand, you have the Chrome DevTools protocol, CDP protocol. Uh, that's lower level, uh, but it's only for uh, Chromium-based browsers. So why exactly is the first one a bit slower? So because actually, there are like two steps. Uh, in the first step, the bot communicates first with uh, a WebDriver instance using the WebDriver protocol. For example, uh, Chrome driver in case of Chromium-based uh, browsers or uh, Gecko driver in case of uh, Firefox. And then the WebDriver instance use, is using the internal protocol in order to communicate with the browser. Uh, in the case of, um, <coughs> of uh, CDP protocol, uh, the bot is already using the internal protocol of Chrome based browser, so this is why it's faster. Another key component of uh, bot is uh, proxies. Uh, so there are a few ways to obtain uh, proxies for, for an attacker. So, I mean, here I mentioned just a few of them, but they can be bought in some of the companies uh, here Oxy Labs, Bird Data, Chef Proxies. Uh, there are uh, websites that are displaying for free uh, proxies, so they can be scraped using one of those tools that are advertised on, uh, 
uh, hacking Telegram channels like GSA Proxy Scraper or uh, U Proxy Scraping Tool. It's also worth mentioning that sometimes malwares are turning uh, user devices into proxies without uh, user consent. Uh, like, for example, this uh, proxy back malware. Okay, another uh, key component is actually the configuration. So most of those advanced bots have the ability to target many different sites, for example, like the one that I mentioned with 100 different targets. So they need an ability to, to tweak it, to customize it for the specific uh, targets. So they can be plugged with a scraping template in case of scraping bots, a uh, configuration file for a credential stuffing uh, a tool. Here, for example, uh, I'm showing how uh, a configuration for a, a silver bullet is being advertised in the pro cracking. And in case of uh, sc scalping bots, it will be the scalping task plus the billing information of the, uh, the attacker. So then, uh, last uh, key component I wanted to mention is the integration with third parties. So there are many kind of third parties that can be very useful for bots. The first one is, for example, uh, anti-captcha challenges. So there are a few categories of them. The first one is like uh, human-based uh, captcha solving. So there are companies that are hiring people to manually solve uh, captchas, like to captcha. You have AI-based, for example, uh, Capmonster. Or uh, you have also a combination of both. Um, death by captcha, for example, first tries to programmatically solve the captcha, and then if it fails, ask someone to do it. Uh, interesting third party also uh, here, AYCD Autosolve, um, give the ability to do uh, anti-captcha stacking, which means that you give priority to your anti-captcha solutions, and then first it will try to solve it via the first solution, and then after, jump to the next one, if it fails. Um, <coughs> Then something uh, very useful, especially for account generation bot, is the virtual phone service provider. So there are phones that are rented somewhere in the world, and given um, the ability to a bot to use this specific uh, phone to receive the one-time code during the registration process in order to have a completely automated flow for account generation with, uh, with one of the bots that I mentioned before. Uh, okay, so now that we saw the main key components of uh, advanced bots, let's uh, try to dig deeper and see uh, more specifically one of the bots. So I decided to pick the uh, scalping bot that I mentioned before, NSB. As I said, it has the ability to target more than 100 different sites uh, over the world. Uh, so it's written with Electron Framework, uh, so which means that the code is written in JavaScript. And it's located in a SAR archive that can be extracted, for example, with a plugin of 7-zip. So when you open this archive, you see usually one folder per each uh, type of target. For example, one folder for Shopify, one folder for uh, targets. And when you open it, you will see a few, piece, uh, a few JavaScript files. Um, so if you try to open them, you'll see that they are like, obfuscated. So there is also like layer of encryption. It's absolutely impossible to understand anything from that. So there are two cases, two, two ways to try to deal with this kind of uh, challenge. The first one is to try to statically analyze the file. So for example, try to deobfuscate the file. This is uh, something that I did actually here. So on the left, you have the site before, and then the piece of code uh, after the obfuscation. And then in this case, it's possible to understand that there are like two main types of JavaScript files. First one in the left contains the bot logic, so the flow of uh, adding item to cart, uh, handling uh, events of uh, changing page, etc. And then you have uh, browser helpers that contain a piece of JavaScript expressions that are going to be injected into the website uh, page in order, for example, to select some item. Select, for example, a button that uh, will perform a click, uh, with, that perform uh, adding to cart, or a button, um, like a text input in order to, to add some text. And this, uh, theoretically, may uh, uh, enable a developer to, uh, to detect uh, a bot trying to perform actions on the site. Okay, the second approach to try to deal with this kind of issue is to uh, dynamically analyze the bot. So for example, something that can be done is uh, consider the bot as a black box and then try to understand which communication it performs with the internal browser it creates. So in order to help researchers do that, we decided for the context of this uh, conference talk to release a new tool on GitHub called uh, Bot Monitor. So here under imperva slash bot monitor. And then it does exactly this. So what it does, it intercepts the CDP communication between the bot 
and uh, the internal browser and filters in what's meaningful for us, what can help us understand what the bot is doing and detect it. So the idea is the following. First, you have a Python program that will inject using Frida a piece of code in the bot that will intercept call to uh, creation of process. And then instead of creating a Chromium-based instance, it will create a proxy that will then start the browser instance. So the advantage of this is first that it knows automatically which part is going to be used by the bot to communicate with uh, the browser. And second, it avoids case where the bot is bypassing the, an operating system proxy. Um, <coughs> so this is how it looks like in practice. So first, we are going to start the bot. So in this case, this is uh, our NSB bot. Then we are finding the PID of this process. We inject the, the code into this uh, process. And then we start the attack. So here in this case, I decided to attack uh, Adidas. Of course, uh, I'm not really attacking this, uh, this site. And then we can see here that we're intercepting first injection of JavaScript, here obfuscated. Oh, shit. Hmm. Sorry. And then, oh, it's okay. And then we intercept also mouse motion, as you can see here. So, can be used for further analysis. So that's it for what I wanted to talk uh, to tell about uh, the structure of uh, advanced bots. So now let's talk about a few evasion techniques that I was able to spot in uh, some of the bot uh, source code. Uh, so first of all, in order to protect those evasion techniques, bot developers are protecting them using um, obfuscation and packing. So in case of .NET bots, it's usually protected with HVM Dengard protection, in Python with PyArmor, or in JavaScript with a JavaScript obfuscation, as we saw just uh, earlier. Uh, but once we bypass this first step, uh, there are like few visions that we can uh, highlight. So like this one, for example. So in order to bypass fingerprint based on HTTP headers, so uh, bot developers are uh, shuffling and randomly picking uh, non-mandatory HTTP headers and adding them to the request that they are sending for each task in order to make the device look like a slightly different one each time a new task is performed. Um, another idea here is to create uh, fake uh, hardware attributes. So the bot is uh, creating uh, a new uh, fake virtual device and in order to, to bypass any kind of fingerprint here in JavaScript. For example, it's setting new available height and available uh, width of a specific device using the get random value uh, function in JavaScript to create uh, uh, to create a new number between 1,000 and 1,600 pixels. So here, actually, because they are using like a uniform random uh, generation of numbers, it may be possible to detect that something uh, strange is coming because there may not be any device on the planet that have this specific combination of size. So um, the idea of bypassing fingerprint based on this is smart, but there, there is a flow that we can detect via the analysis of code. Another interesting uh, plugin that's commonly used is um, uh, evasion of automation frameworks. So here in this case, it's Puppeteer, extra plugin stuff that is very commonly used, that <coughs> makes uh, usage of Puppeteer harder to detect by, uh, by security uh, solutions. Uh, another evasion that's here in this case uh, very specific to, um, uh, to scalping bots is the jigging, uh, jigging of addresses. The idea is to take um, to, to generate many different addresses from the same geographical point that eventually lead to the same geographical point. To do that, uh, we take, for example, some of the keywords in the address, and then we shuffle it. We remove some, uh, some letters. For example, RD will still be understood by the postman. Or add, for example, randomly, uh, leading zero to any number. Another evasion that I was able to spot is uh, simulation of human mouse motion. So. Uh, in some of the cases, it was uh, performed using a Bayesian algorithm. 
So the idea is to take like four different points. Two of them will be like the origin and the destination. And two of them will steer the curve in uh, two random directions. So this is more or less how it looks like in, uh, in practice. I hope you're able to see it, uh, see it right. So it's very smooth. We can see the acceleration, the deceleration. Um, <coughs> but actually, it's too smooth. smooth and, uh, and this is something that we can highlight. So we can measure the acceleration of the curve. So this is what I did in the left. And we can compare it with the acceleration when a real person is uh, using uh, his mouse, and this is something that we can uh, that we can see. So, um, <coughs> you can see that the accel acceleration is in average higher, but there are also many more outliers. So the question is not if we can detect uh, this kind of algorithm using uh, 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 using detection, but uh, how much time we need to be accurate enough. Last but not the least. Um, Advanced bots are not only like a threat for uh, web applications, they're also a threat for their own users, because most of the time they are not developed with the best uh, software practice. And actually, uh, by analyzing one of them, I was able to find a remote code execution uh, on them. So actually, if um, an attacker entices uh, a bot user to uh, use its uh, specifically crafted um, configuration file, it can get full control of the device of the bot user. Here, the configuration file is open. And here you can see calc is, uh, is uh, popped, which means that the attacker gains uh, full, uh, full control. So that's it from my presentation. I hope you liked it. Uh, I would like to thank the organization uh, for this uh, great conference and also for giving me the opportunity to talk uh, in front of you. It was a pleasure to be here at uh, Strasbourg and uh, see this uh, um, uh, very nice city. Are there any questions? Okay, any question? Oh, okay. Hi, yeah, thank you. I have a question about the mouse movement uh, detection because there's a certain subset of users who are, for example, disabled or just like to use uh, a different way of input by um, just jumping to uh, uh, certain points on the website. Uh, so how relevant is mouse motion detection uh, in regards to those users? <coughs> Um, so in this case, um, of course, I think that there's need to, um, to make uh, an algorithm accurate enough to only detect this kind of software and not uh, prevent any user to, um, to access the site, especially if there, there are some feature that enable like bypassing a usage of mouse uh, in order to be, uh, be because of disability. So in this case, I think that if like the, the curve is like too smooth, so then it can be an indicator. So um, um, so I, I'm not. So I think it should be. Uh, it depends on which type of system we're dealing with, and it depends probably on the on the site to to decide if uh, if a specific algorithm are to uh, uh, to to be allowed or not. Okay. Any other question? One, two, three. Four. Okay, thank you very much.